Hello! This is Kabocha here, and today we're going to do a quick little demonstration of doing some screen tone in Clip Studio Paint. You may have previously seen me working with Natto Soup on doing screen tone traditionally, um, and as I mentioned there, I work primarily in a digital process these days, partly for cost effectiveness, partly for simplicity. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So we have some of our image line arted. Um, it's totally up to you how you want to work. I work mostly by having each panel as its own set of layers as a folder. Your preferences may vary. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use the auto select tool. Um, I usually set mine to refer other layers to select, which allows you to select your line art or select based on all layers that are visible in this image. So um, one of the neat things about Clip Studio Paint is you can just kind of drag as you're selecting and it'll select everything. Um, and we're going to do a multi-select by holding down shift. So we've got most of the area that we want to tone, in this case, down here. Um, I had previously decided on the level of contrast I wanted to use for this character's clothing. Um, you know, her the shirt that she's wearing on top of everything is kind of light, so we're going to go with something that's 60 lines. That's the default uh, tone depth that I go for, and about 10% density. So there we go. That's done. Um, now we're going to zoom in and get this brush. This brush is a bunch of regret because, as you see, I don't have most of my line work in here as enclosed areas, but I don't necessarily care about that because if you look at like a normal hairbrush that you use anyway, it's fine. So now what I'm going through and doing is I'm using the lasso tool to go ahead and circle around and just kind of grab that entire area. At the moment, I'm using my mouse. That's the nice thing about this is that I'm not doing anything that's like really intense or would need my tablet. So say you're an artist who doesn't have, you know, the money for a tablet, but you still want to do your screen tone digitally. You could just do all of your line work traditionally, scan it in, clean it up using a program uh, a, a, like a photo editor or something. Clip Studio Paint has some of those features. Um, and then just, you know, scan it in, or after it's scanned in, go ahead and start doing your tone. So my screen tones are generally organized into folders. Uh, yeah, I don't want to work with the color tone this time. That's for another day, but um, let's see. I'm going to go, one of these folders has my textures, and I believe it's this one. These are all the default textures which come from Clip Studio Paint. Um, you know, when you first launch the program, uh, if you are up to date, you can actually get all of the pre-loaded screen tones from the Clip Studio app itself by synchronizing your materials with the cloud. Strongly recommend it. So let's see, what do I want to use? Um, I know that this brush is likely to be made of wood. Did I even tone it in a previous page though? Sometimes I've got to go and look at previous work. So give me just a second while I go ahead and get my previous page clean or pulled up. Yeah. Oh, I just did a normal tone. Um, that's probably about 10%, 20? Okay. As you work with screen tone, you'll learn to recognize certain densities a bit more as you work with it. Oh no, it is 10%. Okay, so it's the same density as her shirt. So in this case, um, 
what we can do is we can actually click on the mask because when you apply screen tone in Clip Studio Paint, unless you're working with an image material, by default it's applied as a mask. So click on the mask, which is this black area, and we're just going to use the bucket fill that's right here. And look at that! Voila! We have our tone. You can also go ahead and use the eraser to clear out areas of the mask that you don't want to show up. Um, and it makes life kind of easy. And look at that! Fantastic! Um, any other tones that we want to apply? I wasn't actually thinking too far ahead for this particular panel, so my sketches don't have much in terms of reference because, you know, that wasn't something I thought about. What is my dog doing? Sorry. Uh, he comes in and, and says hello sometimes. So, let's see. What do we want? Kay's supposed to be very kind of happy and cheerful. So we probably, this gray fog is fine. Um, I've used that many times before for magical style effects, but it's also a great tone for mood. And one of the nice things about Clip Studio Paint is it lets you scale things up and down as you work. Here we go. That's great. You might notice though that this particular tone doesn't have anything as far as, you know, kind of a pattern to it. So we're going to turn on the effect. By default, Clip Studio wants to set it 60 line, uh, which is fine. And we're going to set it, so, or we're going to leave it set to the image. So that means that uh, you'll get that half tone effect on the image itself. So we're not going to worry about the brightness of the image, but what I do like to play with is the dot settings. In this case, I kind of want to have a sand style pattern, which in Clip Studio Paint is known as noise. When you zoom out, it doesn't look very nice. Um, it's just because of the way it renders it, but when you go to work with it on other programs or when you export your file, it ends up looking just fine. Um, so it's something that you're going to have to get used to how it renders because it's not going to look like this kind of mess the way that it is. It, I, I wish that it had a better rendering capability for noise tones. So maybe I don't want to do that. Um, carrots aren't going to work. This tone isn't dark enough to warrant a star. Yeah, I guess we'll just go back to the default circle. It's fine. Alright, so now we've got some screen tony goodness. I'm going to hit Control Shift D to reselect the area, and that's Control Shift D as in dog. Um, and we're gonna pick another tone to use in the background, or alternatively, you know what, this might be a good case for brushes, so I'm going to make a new layer. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of getting rid or working directly in that toned area, I want to make a mask. So I will mask outside of the selection, which means when you mask off an area, that area is not visible in the program. And you'll see by default here, the mask is selected. I will go ahead and click on the layer. And let's go through my brushes, um, which you can find for free online. And I probably, I, I don't, um, <laughs> sorry, I feel a little bit weird advertising it. But no, that's not a great tone. It's a well, it's a great tone, but I don't think it necessarily fits the mood here. Um, let's see. 
you know, I'm just going to go with floaty polygon, polygons 4K because that is what I use for symbolizing her magic anyway. Uh, here we go. And then, you know, what I would normally do is I would make another layer for black fills um, because K is a dark haired character and I want to make sure to get her hair done. Now for K, because her hair is so dark, I don't actually use a tone to fill it usually um, because you know she's just got black hair. So what I do instead is I take advantage of a fill and then just kind of etch out the area that I want. Fills can be your friend and learning how to use spot blacks effectively is a valuable skill in any black and white artist's arsenal. Sorry, it's a little bit harder to actually do this with a mouse. And you'll see that, you know, it's kind of hidden all my lines. Um, what I usually do is I'll go through and erase everything, but that's a process for another time. So, um, that's really it. Screen toning in Clip Studio Paint is quite honestly one of the simplest things you can do. Just remember, click on your tone, hit the little uh, paste button that's down here, it's the little clipboard, and you're good to go. Um, if you find that you put a tone in and you don't like it, you can actually easily swap it out. So let's say we don't like that gray floaty tone, um, and we want to use another one that I imported from another system. Um, I'll just select that tone and instead of hitting the clipboard, I will hit the button behind it, which is the replace button. And it's going to take a minute because the screen tone was scanned in at 1200 dpi and it's absolutely huge. But you see, the new tone is in. Or let's say we wanted to change the mood entirely. We just replace it. Oh, actually. I think I like that better than what I did. Well then, <laughs> playing with screen tone can really net you some interesting results. I suggest that you take the time to play with it, see what you like, and make sure to check out the Clip Studio Assets Store. You know, there's a variety of great tones available to you, both from Celsius and from other creators, um, for free and some from pay. But, you know, have fun!